Alright, how's it going everybody? This is your host Arctic Ghost and welcome to what I'm calling the Arctic Pupper Show. Uh, yep, it's as corny as it sounds. Take that for what you will. Uh, this week I'm bringing you Burn. Um, from what I understand, Burn is the cheapest uh, competitive slash established deck in Pauper, I think. It might be Goblins. But um, I'm pretty sure it's burned. I could be wrong. And right now, the some of the cards uh, like Searing Blaze and Lightning Bolt are a little lower on the costly end because burn is really nowhere in modern right now due to Eldrazi. But come next month when Eldrazi is probably not going to be as big as it is now, burn might make a comeback. So if you want to pick up some of the cards for this deck, you might want to do that. Uh, so what is burn basically? It's as it sounds, it's just a bunch of cards that deal damage to your opponent. It's basically a combo deck that can sideboard into a somewhat control deck. Um, the whole joke combo is you just assemble as many three damage burn spells as possible and then send them to your opponent's face and you win the game. Does it work all the time? No. Does it work a lot of the time? Usually, but you know. When you're playing a deck like this, you just expect variants to get you eventually, so take that for what you will. Um, one thing before I go into the actual deck tech, I would like to point out that the reason I'm calling my decks 1.0 is because if I ever come back to them, you know, now people know that this is the most updated thing. If, you know, let's say three or four months down the line I come back to this deck, I do burn 2.0, and people know that that's the most updated one if I'm still recording videos then, I guess. Uh, so far, I'd, I'm liking it, so... Uh, first up, we'll do the creatures, which is Keldon Marauders. I would never go less than four of this guy. At worst, it's two mana for two damage. At best, it's two mana for five damage. And at medium, it's two mana, two damage, and kill one of your opponent's creatures when they chump it. So, uh, it's it's pretty good. I mean, just the fact that it's a two mana 3-3, three, three, or on turn three, it's another two mana 3-3. Three, three, so, I would never go less than four. Next up is Kiln Fiend. This is a card I've seen pop up in some burn lists, and some, and some it doesn't. Uh, you can win as quickly as turn 3 with Kiln Fiend a lot, and uh, it's really not that hard, actually. If you just go, like, turn 1, Rift Bolt, put them to 17, turn 2, play him, turn 3, you just go Lightning Bolt, Lava Spike, Needle Drop, uh, get them to 10, and then you just kill them. So it's, it, it, it's actually... Uh, a lot easier than you think. Now, sometimes they will kill the Kiln Fiend, but for the games where you can get a little lucky and they don't have the removal spell quickly enough, you can get them. And then you have Goblin Fire Slinger. I've seen decks without this card, and I've seen decks with this card. Personally, I like it, especially because we're playing uh, Needle Drop. Uh, you want as many ways to activate Needle Drop as possible. Sometimes you'll draw the Fire Slinger over the Curse. And Fire Slinger is really like uh, Curse 5 through 6. So, I, I've, I haven't been unhappy with it. I'm going to keep it in. Next up are the burn spells. First up are the ones that uh, might not seem that strong, which are Needle Drop. Uh, honestly, Needle Drop was not, would not be very good at all, really, without the draw a card effect on it, of course. But um, you get one damage out of a free cantrip. Almost free. So, I kind of like it, whether or not it should come out. I'm not really sure, but I've been enjoying it. Curse of the Pierce starts pretty good. Just having reoccurring damage to your opponent is uh, a lot better than you may think. It's almost like having Silveric Vortex in your deck, but obviously not really. But uh, when you get two of these out, the shock to your opponent every turn can usually be the clutch moment that you need. Uh, next up are the cards that really need no introduction, which are Rift Bolt, Lightning Bolt, and Lava Spike. These should be staples as four ofs in the deck. They are three of your best Lightning Bolt effects, so I would never go less than four. Then you have Fire Blast, which is your strongest spell uh, by all technical means. You want to play four because you, you really want to draw one early and quickly as your finisher. And sometimes you do get to four mountains in play, and you just, you know, you want to Fire Blast, you have to Fire Blast twice. So, you know, I wouldn't go four less, fire, less than four Fire Blast. No, I can't even speak. And then you have Chain Lightning. Although Chain Lightning might not seem very good, because if your opponent has two red, it can screw you over, but it's still a one ma it's still another Lightning Bolt, even though it looks almost exactly like Lightning Bolt. So, uh, 
I would keep it at four. <laughs> well, this picture looks exactly like lightning bolt anyway, almost. And then you have the less good spells, in my opinion. First up, you have Incinerate. The reason why I don't have Flame Rift in this deck is because, one, it's very expensive. Two, uh, I think the mirror kind of shifts in and out on whether or not it's popular. Uh, so, or even against, like, Goblins or something, Flame Rift isn't very good. So I'm choosing to play Incinerate. Yeah, it's one less damage, but you can also kill a creature with it at its worst. The, re the reason why I use Incinerate over Lightning Strike or Searing Spear is because of the fact that, one, I like it, and two, I guess if you run into something like, I don't know, River Boa, or what's that guy from Plane Shift? Uh, Nightscape Familiar, it, I don't know, the regeneration could mean something. So Also, the picture looks really cool. Uh, then next up is Searing Blaze. Searing Blaze is not my favorite spell in this deck, but it is certainly a strong spell if you can get it. Um, I've had fine testing with two. I'm not really a fan of three or four. I don't really like drawing them too early. I kind of like drawing them a little later when you're holding a land in your hand to try and bluff. And then you can usually get someone with Searing Blaze. So I'm going to stay at two for now, but I would not fault anyone for going up to three. I do not think you should be a four, but that's just my opinion. And then you have one lightning strike to just to round out the deck. Uh, so, you know, take that for what you will. Coming to the sideboard, sideboard's pretty straightforward. You have Molten Reigns against Tron. Why do I think this is better than Rays? Well, if you're on a light land heavy draw... Oh, sorry, you have uh, 16 mountains and two forgotten caves, so you can play like a 58 card deck. Uh, you know, quick mana base. With raise, if you're on a light land draw, you're not really going to want to sacrifice land. Sometimes you just have only two or three lands. And the sweet spot for this deck really is three lands. Uh, four is really where you, as far as you want to go. Once you've gone past four, you're in a little bit of trouble. And the reason why I say four is because of two, the possibility of going double fire blast. But, you know... Um, Sometimes variance is just going to happen. You have to accept it. There's not much you can do. Also, the fact that it deals two extra damage when it hits a non-basic land is uh, pretty good. Then you got Smash Smithereens. A lot of people like playing Gorilla Shaman in the sideboard. I don't have it. One, because it's very, very expensive. <laughs> and uh, and two, because I actually just think Smash Smithereens in this deck is better. Yeah, you could get somebody with Gorilla Shaman... But against Affinity, but not only is this card good against Affinity anyway, killing Mirror Enforcer, an Artifact Land, a Spring Leaf Drum, Frogmite, what have you, it's also good against uh, decks like Tron, where, you know, it kind of gives you that extra reach. Um, you know, so you, usually against Tron, I would, you know, usually bring out three Needle Drops because it's just too much of a liability, in my opinion. Uh, and I usually take out, like, a, a Curse of the Pierced Heart or even maybe, like, a, a Fire Slinger is the weakest card. And uh, this card's a lot better than people think. Uh, oh, by the way, usually I wouldn't take out all Needle Drops. I would bring in like two of these because they can easily just play an artifact and crack it. Not that Tron's a good matchup anyway because once they get Fangrim Marauder down, there's nothing you can really do about them from gaining life, but, you know. Then next up is Murder of Ashes. This is the control aspect. Uh, a lot of people like Electricery. I personally never liked the card. I never liked trying to, uh, how do I say this, buy time, I guess is the best way, against Delver. Against Delver, you want to just kill him as quickly as possible. If, if you're ever trying to buy time, you're probably going to fall far behind or you're already losing. As where this card against almost every aggro deck is just really clutch. So it's, you know, having a Wrath of God effect is really, really good. Then you got a couple Power Blasts against the blue decks to help you force through. Um, whatever, you know, god spell you need. If you need to protect your kiln fiend, if you need to force through a fire blast, this can help you. That's why I only really play two. Then you have flaring pain against uh, cards like prismatic strands or circle protection red. You're not guaranteed to beat those cards, but this is a necessary evil. I think that everyone needs to play on their sideboard. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm sure I am. And then you have a couple lightning strikes to bring in to sub out cards that aren't very good against certain decks. Like, this is obviously not very good against Tron, so you would bring in the lightning strikes. Uh, 
Curse the Pierce Heart's obviously not really at its best against the Mirror, so you would sub them out for Lightning Strikes. And that's, you know, that's basically the deck. So, um, not going to waste any more of your time. Going to run it through a Pauper Classic Tuesdays later tonight. And uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you then.